of July 20th, 2017 to order. Uh, will the secretary please call the roll? Alberta Christie. Here. Phil Becerra. Monica Garcia. Phil Becerra is en route, by the way. He called me. Oh. He's en route. Uh, Monica Garcia. <coughs> Janelle Hardy. Here. Lawrence Hitterdale. Here. Edward Marashi. Here. Tim Rush. Here. Phil Schaefer. Madam Chair, you have a quorum. Thank you so much. Okay, and would we all please rise? And uh, Commissioner Hitherdale will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pledge allegiance to the flag of our country. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Well, the record please um, indicate that Commissioner Monica Garcia has arrived. Welcome. Okay, uh, moving on. Okay, this is the time for public comments that are not on the agenda. Okay, not on the agenda. Okay, most of you here are on the agenda. Okay. I don't know. This is my first time in doing this, so I'm not sure. I, I should be on the agenda. How do I know if I'm on the agenda? Um, we ah, do we? There's an agenda. Okay. <laughs> and your name, sir? Sure. And, Wood. Okay. And I did not see you on the agenda. Agenda. Okay. Mm -hmm. We did not. So, would okay? We have a form for you to complete and all the other of our guests that are here that are on the agenda. We do have a form for you to complete if you wish to talk about your specific property. And we encourage you to do that because we learned so much about that. So, um, I've inquired Aaron? like multiple times, came down multiple times, filled out the application, gave the money, and, um, okay. and I missed the first application deadline by a couple days or something. Okay, 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 Eric, right? Yes. Yeah, okay, why don't you come up okay. and speak? Okay. Let us know what's going on that you want us Hello to Hello, everyone. Do. Okay. I and am a fill out the form as, and, and on that, you're speaking on non agenda items, okay? Okay, so I okay. fill this form out first? No, well, you can do it after you speak. Okay. Hello. I have a home in Santa Ana I purchased a couple years ago. It's on uh, 1237 West 3rd Street. And um, decided that uh, I wanted to fill out the Mills Act because I like restoring old homes and wouldn't want to change it anyways and found out there was a Mills Act and filled out the application shortly after buying the property in uh, January of 16. And... Turned the application in, I believe it was uh, February or March, and they said I just missed the deadline, paid the application fee, and inquired two times where I came down in person because it's just if my home's just a few blocks away. And they told me the date and didn't tell me the time, so I came back again to ask for the time. I emailed, I believe, someone a couple times. Uh, in charge of the historical department didn't hear anything back so I was told that the meeting was today and I showed up I kind of blind now don't know what's going on okay Could you repeat your address again? 1237 West 3rd Street is called the Gullian home okay, okay. Okay, and uh, I see. Hi, Ken. In, resp yeah, you were over here. in response, uh, um, in response, can I respond to that, sure, Madam okay, Chair? Um, yes, one of our staff members is going to speak with you now about the scheduling of your um, agenda item. It is on the next round, um, so it will be. So next he will work that. Yes, he's right here. Please, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is Thank Ivan. You. So Eric and Ivan will go over there. And would you please uh, fill out the form? Okay. Sure. This is okay for it. All right. Is there anyone else in the audience on non-agenda items? Okay. Uh, with that. Okay. Here we go. 
Uh, this is on for moving on to our consent calendar, and uh, we need two motions. Um, the first one I'm going to call for the approval of the minutes uh, for the uh, April 20th meeting. Move approval. Moved by Commissioner Schaefer. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Barashi. Um, is there any discussion or additions or corrections? Okay. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed or abstaining? Motion ca carries unanimously. And would we please indicate for the record that Commissioner Schaefer is in the, <laughs> in the house. Did we, did we get everybody? Okay, all right. Okay, the next one is the approval of the minutes uh, for that date is we did uh, oh uh, April let's go back April 6 I'm sorry let's go back to April 6 okay Okay, uh, is there a motion for the approval of the meeting of uh, minutes of April 6th? Move approval. Move approval by Commissioner Schaefer. I second that. Second Commissioner uh, Garcia. Are there any additions or corrections? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, all those opposed? Motion carries. Okay, the next on, on our uh, items uh, is that... Um, do any of the commissioners uh, no okay uh, the next one uh, approval of minutes ABC special on that now excused happens oh commissioner we were just about to say do we have an excuse for it? commissioner <laughs> Becerra is here so we have a full house okay okay yes, uh, Madam Chair, I Move approval of the following uh, two items on the consent calendar. Okay. Uh, C, the uh, historic preservation agreement, uh, uh, 201704, and then item. Sorry. Okay. And then item uh, D, the uh, excusal, excusing absences of any commission members who are absent. Okay, well, we don't have any abs absences. So I don't believe we have any absences, so we, we we'll, we'll forego that. Forego that one. Okay, on the item for, uh, is um, there a second to the motion? I move to second. Okay, okay, on the, uh, moved by uh, Commissioner Hiddale, moved by, uh, second by Commissioner Marashi, uh, approval of the Historic Property Preservation Agreement Number 2017-04, um, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, motion carried unanimously. Okay, next one is, on our business calendar, next order of business on that is for item number one, This is the time and place for the public hearing on item number one for Historic Resource Commission application number 2017-07, Historic Register, categorization number 2017-06, and Historic Property Preservation Agreement number 2017-03. And that is on the property that's located at 22 03 North Ross Street, filed by Eric and Diane P. Halverson. Okay. Um, do any of the commissioners have anything they wish to disclose regarding this one? I know that I went to see the property along with. Right. Ed, Ed, uh, Commissioner Marashi and uh, Chair Alberta Christie went on Sunday to visit all four homes. Um, and we were only able to meet one of the owners. Uh, and that's it, that's our disclosure. Okay, all right. All right, staff will now make the presentation on this item. All right. 
Thank you, Madam Chair, uh, members of the Commission. Uh, I've set up the uh, PowerPoint presentation to go over uh, each and every item individually so that you can take action uh, after my presentation. So I'll start. And uh, before you this evening, oh, uh, oh, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry, we normally take one, mm -hmm. work on that, and then after we vote on that, we go to the next one. Correct. Show at the same time. Yeah, okay. it, should, it should follow through pretty easy. Okay. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. So before you this evening is a request by the applicants to consider the designation and also a historic preservation agreement for these addresses here at, um, the first one is 2203 Ross, North Ross. The second one is 930 West River Lane. The third is 1710 North Heliotrope Drive. And lastly, 2529 North Valencia Street. And uh, this is more of a refresher. Uh, I'm sure you guys know this better than I do. Um, the four items before you this evening are all uh, contributive in the category. And to define that is the building or the structure, object or site contributes to the overall character and history of the neighborhood or the district and is a good example of period architecture. With that said, we'll start with the first home here. Um, the home or the PA Mitchell House um, is a contributive um, feature to the city of Santa Ana. It's located at 2203 North Ross Street. The house itself is an English Revival style. Um, it's approximately 2,341 square feet with a detached garage towards the rear on a 7,400 um, square foot lot. The architecture itself, it's a two-story stucco clad, uh, mostly there with a high-pitched roof, um, shingle and material. As you can see in the image, there's two projecting wings. Um, and in the center of those wings is a, a formal entrance with a turret style. Um, most of the windows throughout are either casement or um, single hung. As you can see in the, in the projecting wings, there's a bullnose awning. Um, that is a good feature of this style of architecture. Uh, one thing you can't see, um, and is, it's one of those features that we see in English revival style, is the vines on the walls. And uh, on the driveway towards the right of the image is the, is the driveway that leads all the way to the detached garage. And it's got a full wall of vines, which adds to the character of the home there. Um, and just a little bit of the residence, the, excuse me a second. The home was constructed in 1930. Um, the first residents at the home were Mr. Paul Albert Mitchell and his wife Gertrude Mitchell. And he was originally from Illinois and later moved uh, to Lebanon, Oregon, prior to moving to Santa Ana. Um, this wasn't the first home that the Mitchells moved into before uh, when they migrated to Santa Ana. Uh, he also held uh, residence at two other locations, uh, 2141 North Greenleaf Street and 1201 North Bush Street, which is also a historic home in our register uh, that is known as the Isaac's, Isaac's Son House. And that was placed on the register in the year of 2000. Uh, Mr. Mitchell was a businessman, and he was uh, a manager at a telephone company. And Miss Gertrude um, was a housewife. Miss Gertrude later passed away in 1940, and shortly after, Mr. Mitchell followed. Um, there wasn't too much as far as the history of the residence there, but I was able to find a few things about the Mitchells. Um, and that concludes my presentation for this property here. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, Madam Secretary, have we received any written communication on this property? No. no. Uh, I'm hearing that. The public hearing is now open. Uh, is there anyone here from the public that wish to speak on this application or this home? Um, uh, the, the owners weren't able to make it. They had okay. given me a, a okay. call ahead of time. Okay. If that, uh, not, then I am here to um, close the public hearing um, and bring it back to the commission for, um, to, for comments. Are there any comments? Is there yeah, if I um, could ask a question, Ivan, I notice in your notes, in your report, um, it says the property is ineligible for National Register listing. Is that because it's only contributive? Uh, yes. And um, 
we we consider that more of a um, because it is architecturally uh, a Tudor style, but there were some alterations to the rear, which aren't visible from the street, and they follow the guidelines for interior the ar the architect of interior standards. Um, but with that, it's not an intact home, original intact. So, it's one of those considerations. Um. Hmm. All right. Okay. Do I hear a motion for this property? Um, so moved. You have to read the whole thing. What? You have to read the whole thing. You have to read the recommendation. recommendation. Okay. Let me get back to that. <clears throat> Forgive me. That's okay. I'm not a journeyman commissioner here yet, so. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, so I move that uh, we adopt a resolution approving Historic Resources Commission application 2017-07 and approving Historic Register, Register categorization number 2017-06 for the property uh, on... Uh, 2203 North Ross Street, known as the P.A. Mitchell House. Number two, you have to read the second version. And number two, recommend that the City Council authorize the City Manager and Clerk of the Council to execute a Mills Act agreement with the Halverson Living Trust subject to non-substantive changes approved by the City Manager and City Attorney. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Second. Okay, moved by Commissioner Rush. Second by Commissioner Schaefer. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Um, all those opposed? Motion carried. Let's give them a hand. Congratulations. <laughs> okay. Even though they're not here, they still get an applause, right? Got another one. Okay. Moving on to item number two is the time and place for the public hearing. Item number two for Historic Resource Commission application number 2017-09 historic register categorization number 2017-08 uh, and historic property preservation agreement number 2017-05 and this uh, home is located at 930 west river lane uh, filed by paul anderson and mona shaw anderson okay um once again oh uh, you got us we both were there okay so you got this moving on staff presentation please thank you madam chair uh let me flip through here so you can see an image of the the front of the house so the home at 930 west river lane or now known as the busaka house um is a ranch style it's a unique ranch um, as you can see it's primarily in stucco but it does have that red brick accent uh, which complements that style of architecture quite well and you can see it throughout the driveway and the uh, walkable path from the the sidewalk in the street um, the hip roof is is topped with a wood shake and also um, I'd like to mention that there's some tile around the seams which is familiar to another house just down the street that we saw, uh, I believe, late last year. Um, I, I forget what doctor it was, but it was one of those uh, better known doctors in the area from the day. Um, the structure spreads throughout the width of the property and it has a broken hip roof at the center, which as you can see, it, it features those half timber designs and that's why it makes it a unique ranch style. Um, the front entry is made of the, a solid wood door with the glazed side lights. And then to the right of that door is a large multi-pane bay window. Um, it allows a lot of natural light to go in. Uh, the homeowner probably knows that better than I do. Um, and throughout the home, the, the windows are large casements. Um, as I mentioned, the, the driveway is, is quite large and um, it allows for the, that ranch style feel that um, people are going for in the 50s where you can park your vehicle and it, it's part of the era. Um, a little bit about the uh, construction of the home. The original residents were the Busacas, Mr. Mark and Mabel. And um, just a little bit of the construction. The builder, sometimes we have a hard time <coughs> finding who actually constructs these things, but uh, we know for a fact that it was Mr. David Keller and he was a well-known construction uh, person in Santa Ana. Uh, who was also part of the 
the Santa Ana Breakfast Club, which was pretty popular back in the day, and the Junior Ebel Club. But Mr. Busaka was, wasn't originally uh, born in the United States. He was from Italy and later migrated to California, or more specifically the Fresno area, where he lived for a number of years. Um, he lived in the Central Valley, uh, mostly in the Bakersfield, Fresno area, and he also held employment with the Metropolitan Life Insurance Company as an insurance agent. Uh, after that, they moved to Bakersfield, where he also held a, a manager position for the MetLife Insurance Company. Um, the Busakas were more of the socialites to the uh, Fresno area, where they were pretty popular, and um, Mabel was one of the uh, more avid bri bridge players, I'm assuming, of the, of the area, and she was a, a, a house, a homemaker. Um, after moving to Santa Ana, they, uh, held the, Mr. Busaka held the same employment and he unfortunately passed away in 1951, but he returned to his original um, stomping grounds in the, the Fresno area and was buried in that area. So um, that concludes my presentation. Um, and with that, staff recommends the following. Okay, thank you so much. Um, one of the things, uh, Ivan, that you said, it's that, you know, bridge social. We, we find that you know, uh, a lot of it uh, was bridge, <laughs> and that's the whole area over there, and uh, the driveway and so forth that you have. Um, uh, there was a status symbol mm -hmm. uh, to let them know, I'm wealthy, I'm here, I have a ride. Okay, <laughs> so that's why you have the belt on that. They wanted to show off, okay? Um, uh, do we have any written uh, uh, communications? No, okay, with that, We'll now open, open the public hearing. Is there anyone here? Uh, the homeowners, homeowners here. Here, would you, would you like to speak on your property, or, or say? I don't know that I have anything to add. Okay, that's fine. We, we just thank you so much. Beautiful home. So now you know you have a home that had, had um, was quite, you know, the status symbol for there because of the fact that. They wanted to proclaim that we are wealthy. We have a driveway in the front part of the house. Okay, <laughs> welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Okay, okay. With that, I am now. Anyone else? No, no. I'll close the public hearing and bring it back to the commission for action. Um, action or comments? First. Comment. Comments. comments. Um, I, I have a couple comments. Um, I sold this home to Mona, and I'm very proud of that. It's uh, one of the largest lots on River Lane, uh, nearly a half an acre, and does back to Santiago Creek, which is wooded and very private, very nice uh, behind the property. And that's a nice kind of framing or backdrop for the house. And it definitely, as you can see in the picture, has some English tutoring style to it, um, even though you're calling it a ranch. I don't really care what we call it as long as <laughs> we preserve it, because it is a, a special home. Um, I love the wood roof with the tile ridge cap, and it has all the original windows. And um, Mona's has taken very, very good care of um, painting and restoring and doing likewise. But yes, the driveway is massive on that house. I think you can fit four or five or six six cars on it, and it has one of the biggest jacaranda trees in the neighborhood in the front. Um, but it's a striking home, and all the neighbors on River Lane and Sharon Road know this house, so it's, it stands out. Phil, it would it be appropriate to call it a Tudor inspired, inspired I, ranch? I think so, yeah, definitely. It's, when I saw the picture, I thought, well, it's kind of Tudor. Yeah, it, it's more Tudor thing. to me than ranch, but that's okay. I've, I've seen houses in England that look a lot like that, so. Could, could we change the verbiage to reflect that? It's a Tudor-inspired ranch. Um, you can't help but look at it. And we, we've had a, a few Tudors with Normandy uh, flair to it. I'm, yeah. I'm sure um, we can make uh, those Laura changes. Laura is shaking no. <laughs> but we'd have to consult with the uh, yeah, council. The attorney. <laughs> yeah. Attorneys don't like change, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you've already... Um, attached to the agenda, you know, a certain description of it. Mm. Um, so unless you wanted to re-notice it for another day with no. a different description, no. I wouldn't no. recommend that. No, not that, not that. No. I won't die on that cross. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other comments? Okay. If, if there are no other comments, I'd like to move this one uh, okay. because it's uh, a 
client of mine and a friend, and so um, with great um, uh, anticipation, I'd like to move uh, that we adopt the approval, the resolution of the Historic Commission application number 2017-09, um, categorizing this home for our registry, and also at the same time do the Mills Act um, and recommend to the clerk of the council to execute that with Paul and Mona and um, subject to non-substantive changes or whatever the attorneys want to have in there. Okay, is there a second? I'll second. Second. So much easier to be a second. My goodness. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Come you on, found guys. that out, Tim. Yeah, wow. Okay, it's been moved by Commissioner Schaefer, second by Commissioner Rush. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion cap again. Okay, moving right along to item number three. This is the time and place for the hearing of item number three for the Historic Resource Commission, application number 2017-13, Historic Register Categorization 2017-12 and Historic Property Preservation Agreement number 2017-09. And this is on the property, uh, filed by Ryan Arthur Isaac Grissom and Andrew Michael Layton uh, at 1710 North Heathrow Drive. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, as you mentioned, the property is at 1710 North Heliotrope Drive. Uh, the house is a Tudor Revival example of construction in Santa Ana. It's approximately 1,300 square feet with a detached garage, uh, which faces the alley uh, to the south. Um, it's on a property of approximately 8,500 square feet. Uh, as I mentioned, the, it's designed in a Tudor Revival style and sheathed in stucco and has a I'm sorry, and has a steeply pitched uh, gable roof. Um, the largest of the, the gables it runs north to south, and the roofing material is primarily shingle. The largest of the gables, as I mentioned, it runs um, east to west. I'm sorry. That was the time. No, 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 I said it wrong. I'm sorry about that. The largest of the roofs runs north to south, and uh, there's a cross gable, as you can see, um, the uh, roof apex has a series of triangular attic vents that you can't see from this image, but if you take a walk around the, um, the alley there, you can see that. And the property also has two chimneys, which creates a sort of balance between the design of the home. One of them is very simple in design. It, it uh, lacks in variation of the other material that's used on the other chimney, which is, includes terracotta chimney pots at, at the top, and it's wrapped in a brick at the mid-height. Um, so it creates an accent, a variation of that, and an example of the different materials that were used in the Tudor revival. Um, so it, like I mentioned, it creates symmetry to the front elevation of the house. The entry porch is accessed actually through the alley, um, uh, through the south of the property, and it's, it's a covered porch that it, it's elevated on two steps there. Um, the front door is a solid wood round top glass panel door, um, as seen in, in many Tudor revival styles. And then the combination of windows throughout the home are, are casements and wood single hungs. The garage is also uh, fitted with a modern style door, but it, it looks almost like it, it was um, part of the time with the same color uh, combination as the home. And then just a little bit about the history of the residence. This one, even though it's the smaller of the homes, I really enjoyed the history of it, um, just the residents and the owners. And as you saw in the description, um, it kind of took a, a full circle as the, the people that lived in there, what they did for a living, and I'll, I'll cover that a little bit. So the original uh, residents of the home were Rockford John Schaefer. Um, I'm not sure if they're related to one of our <laughs> commissioners. <laughs> Spelled differently. Uh, <laughs> and he was originally from uh, Ohio. Uh, the couple, uh, Sh Mr. Schaefer and, and his wife, Addie, they actually met in Ohio and wed there in 1912. Uh, Mr. Schaefer was born in 1887, and uh, Addie was uh, 10 years his senior and born in 1877. Uh, he, in those days. Wow. Yeah, 10 years is a big difference back in, in the day, but <laughs> uh, 
Mr. Rockford uh, joined the military efforts and uh, enlisted with the United States Navy. Uh, and after the service, the, the couple moved to Los Angeles before moving to Santa Ana. Uh, Mr. Rockford held many jobs, um, which was one of those things that we see with uh, a few of the residents that, that lived in these homes. They always held everyday jobs, but different in, in variety. So some of his uh, employments were a mechanic, a custodian, a carpenter, and a salesman. And Addie was a, a homemaker. What was interesting about Mr. Schaefer is that he also volunteered his time with the, the Santa Ana High School, and he was a caretaker and advisor to the, uh, the drama club, the, the stage crew, and he directed them in building sets. And um, you know that was one of the things that now the current property owners uh, share as far as their, their employment, and that's what I mentioned with the full circle. Uh, Mr. Layton, who is uh, the current owner, also advises young theater students, and uh, it's kind of interesting to see how you know one thing, one peculiar historic fact of Santa Ana, which makes it interesting. It's not just the architecture, but also the people and what they do, and what they uh, have that input in for the city and the high school and everyone else. So, And with that, staff uh, concludes the presentation, and. Uh, recommends the following actions. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Madam Secretary, do we have any written communication? Uh, okay. And um, you know who saw. Okay. It's disclosure, so do not bow. <laughs> okay. All right. And with that, we'd like to open uh, the uh, public hearing uh, for item number three. Historic Resource Commission Application 2017-13, Historic Register Categorization 2017-12, uh, and Historic Property Preservation Agreement 2017-09, uh, okay. Uh, are there anyone in the public that wish to comment? Please? I, I don't have anything else to add, except that it's been a real joy learning about our home in this way. So thank you so much. You're Mr. I'm Mr. Layton. Oh. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Okay. Uh, Mr. Layton, can I ask a question of you? Yeah. Do you feel like you're part of Floral Park Neighborhood Association? And the reason I ask is because of the wall. There's, there's a wall that closes off Heliotrope right there, and there's two homes that are there that really are part of the neighborhood. Uh, but having that wall, I just I want to make sure he feels welcome. Um, the, the association has tried to make us feel welcome. The wall is is definitely a barrier for us. We don't really have access to the neighborhood right. uh, directly. So um, so that's an interesting relationship. But uh, yeah. Well, if there's anything I can do to help that relationship, let me know. I am the president of the Neighborhood Association. Thank you. So Thank much. you. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's bring it back to the session. Okay. Ed, in the words of uh, Ronald down? Reagan, Mr. Marashi, bring down this wall. Okay, hold on, hold on. Okay, anyone else from the audience wish to speak? If not, that I've now closed the public hearing. Now I'm bringing it back to Commissioner comments. Okay, um, I'd just like to say, um, uh, Mr. Uh, Layton, right? Mr. Mr. Layton, right? Your home is beautiful. Uh, you know, we went through the history of what it's gone through and, and how you just turned that home around. And it just adds so much to that little street that goes in there for Helia. So I drive by that almost all, you know, several times. Never would have known that that was Heliotrope, you know. Uh, the only thing I recognize is the Players Club, <laughs> you mm. know, <laughs> that's there and your home's there. Um, uh, looking at your neighbor's house across the street, too, on Heliotrope, uh, do they feel, I mean, that's a beautiful home, and I don't know if that one is on the historic or not, but, uh, no. I, I don't think so. No. I, don't, I would encourage you to talk to them and see by having them to place that on, to, you know, to bring you in and incorporate into that. Um, Floral Park area because that home is gorgeous. Uh, you know, it's a small home, but it's well maintained. So uh, if you could work with the staff and staff work with them to not, you know, to get it in so that you will feel inclusive 
because you have all those historic homes <coughs> behind the wall that are there and just say, hey guys, we're here, you know, and, and we have a historic value to add to your to your area. So you do that. You greatly appreciate it. Any other comments? Mr. Commissioner Hiddell? Uh, yes, I just wanted to uh, call attention to kind of the historic uh, note here. If I read the information correctly, there have only been three owners of this home since it was constructed in uh, probably about 1930. Uh, the Schaefers and then the Logish uh, family occupied it for uh, about uh, 60 uh, years, and then Mr. Layton uh, now has it. Uh, so that's, uh, that's pretty impressive and, uh, and remarkable and, and noteworthy, I think. Any other questions or comments? <laughs> Yay. <laughs> All right. Um, is there a motion? Do we? Come on, go. I'd like, to make a, a, I'd like to make a motion to, number one, adopt a resolution approving historic resources commission application number 2017-13 and approving historic register categorization number 2017-12. And number two, recommend that the city council authorize the city manager and clerk of the council to execute a Mills Act agreement with Ryan Arthur Grossheim and Andrew Michael Layton, subject to non-substantive changes approved by the city manager and city attorney. Is there a second? I would like to second the motion. Okay. Uh, moved by Commissioner Garcia, second by... Uh, Commissioner Mureshi. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carried unanimously. Okay. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. Moving on. But it's now uh, to item number four. Uh, this is time and place for the public hearing on item number four for Historic Resource Commission application number 2017-14 historic re uh, register categorization number 2017-13 and historic property preservation agreement number 2017-10 and this is on the home filed by Ms. Zutilio Jimenez. Zutilio Jimenez and and Adriana de la Rosa uh, on the property at 2529 North Valencia, okay? And with that, um, uh, we, once again, we disclosed, okay? Now we'll have the staff to do the presentation. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this was a very interesting house, which I had the uh, opportunity to name it this way. I thought it would be <coughs> Odd to just name it the Bird House, so we went with the RD Bird, which is the uh, original permit, um, the name on the original permit. As you can see, it's a very interesting home. Uh, it's a unique example of what we would consider a ranch style of architecture. The the home is is one story. It's primarily wrapped in a, a shiplap wood siding, with the exception of the front elevation, as you can see with the uh, variation in the walls. It also includes um, the brickwork, but with a weeping mortar finish, which is quite unique. And, and as you know, it, it takes great talent to do that as well. Um, and that's also used in the planter uh, right below the, uh, the home there, the same finish, just to keep consistency. Um, the uh, residence is capped with a medium pitched hip roof uh, with a gable design as well incorporated throughout. The uh, material of the roof is composition shingle, and the, the garage is actually attached, but it's placed towards the rear of the property um, with a long driveway as well as you can see with the previous home, the Basaka, with the ranch style. It was that, that sort of feel of having that grand door um, driveway. Uh, the front elevation offers two large bay windows, um, and, and in those bay windows, it's actually three individual single hung uh, windows and they are um, sitting under a standing seam awning, which is also part of the main entrance there, which is on a two-step concrete landing. Um, 
what's unique about this one is it, it offers a balance and in a balance in a way because of the, the portholes that it has in the front elevation and both portholes are different in design and the one you really see is the diamond pattern but the most unique one is actually to the left which is ha it, it provides a stained glass finish which you really have to walk up to the home to see um, but I did want to mention that and you know the the landscaping up front is is sod but i believe the homeowners are in in that process of re-landscaping so that's why it's a little uh, drought tolerant as you can see from the image um, the original owners of the property were mr richard and gertrude another gertrude um, and that was his wife uh, they lived at this home but before moving to santa Ana, they um, richard was an arkansas native and gertrude was actually born in the state of california i couldn't figure out where exactly uh, she was from, but she is native to this state. Um, Richard also moved to Seattle, Washington before moving finally to Santa Ana. And um, prior to moving into this specific home, the couple actually rented uh, a property on Greenleaf, which is 2045 Greenleaf. And I'd like to mention that's also part of our uh, list of applicants for, for this year. So you'll be seeing that. Uh, Mr. Bird was the president of an oil sales co uh, company called Bird's Motor Fuels, um, which distributed to the McMillan Petroleum Company. And Ms. Gertrude was a homemaker. As you mentioned, Madam Chair, they're avid bridge players, and they held lavish parties for their neighbors. Uh, they had one child, Maxine, who was born in 1926. And uh, the next uh, bit of information I'll actually read because it was very interesting. Um, so Mr. Bird was later the victim of a revenge stabbing in 1941. According to the newspapers, Richard was traveling on Palisades Road near the Santa Ana Country Club when he lost control and hit two large eucalyptus trees, hurling Mr. Bird out of the car. The car was found in a ditch, and Mr. Richard was found the following morning with stab wounds on both sides of his throat, nearly missing the jugular by a fraction of an inch. Mr. Bird passed away in 1941 and was buried in Fairhaven Mausoleum. So with that, it's rich history. It's not quite what we expect for property owners to go through, but it is history of Santa Ana, indeed. So I'd like to mention that as well. Uh, and that concludes my presentation. Um, and with that, staff recommends the following actions. Did the tree take revenge out on him? <laughs> I mean. It, it's still under debate. Um, I think it was uh, someone, a person, not the tree. <laughs> That's a very cold case. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Was it a bird? It, that would have been very uh, interesting. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Man, what a rich history we have when we dig into it. Um, okay. Um, uh, Madam Secretary, do we have any uh, written communication? No. If not, uh, I now declare that the public hearing is now open. Uh, would anyone, would you care to homeowners speak? Our homeowners are here. I'm shocked that this was shared. I was like, I hope it's not shared. It's part of the history. So, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And um, no, we love our home, and our our home is also we are the third owners, right? And so. We are so proud and excited and just really grateful to you, Ivan, because you did such a great job in the research and um, just very blessed. Could I ask Mr. Jimenez yeah, uh, to come up because when, when, when you yeah. showed Commissioner Rashi and I your home, you were talking about the design element that you have and key you yes. had. And, and the different things, not right. only with the front, but in the back. Could you just yeah, enlighten have, the other commissioners for that? Sure. We have a courtyard in the back, which is really beautiful. And the, the home is in the U shape. So, so the middle of the house has a fireplace as well. So that it complements the area. That's why probably they were having lavishes um, or parties or so. It has a huge backyard, which we're also trying to take care of as well. And it's beautiful. And when I saw the bird, name there, we have a little um, bird uh, bath in the middle there. Every day we have visitors, every day, single <laughs> birds, always different types of birds, and not just one. We have, sometimes we have uh, woodpecker that comes down the line there, so it's beautiful. 
Uh, Mr. Schaefer actually sold us our home as well. We are very Is there grateful. anyone you haven't sold a home to? Fifty <laughs> percent today. That's all. <laughs> uh, the uh, we do know the the ex owners. Uh, we actually have um, the Hunts come over a couple of times already. The sons, the son of the Hunts, have come over as well and share their um, how they have so much fun in the house and how they that house was pretty much uh, for the kids. Uh, we love it. Uh, we love the neighborhood. Um, when we put it up for, for historical uh, and, and, and the uh, announcement came out, most of our neighbors came around. And now they're also looking for that, looking to come in and actually put their houses in, in the registry as well. So, so I just thank you for the effort that you guys put on, onto this um, committee. And, and thank you for how you guys uh, developed this as well. And uh, we are very <coughs> proud to be owners in Santa Ana. Thank you. And just to keep us a little legal, could you fill out the form for us, too? Oh, sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Right, Laura? <laughs> She's looking at me over here. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much. Anyone else? Thank you also for your comments and so forth. Okay. Uh, and with that, I'd like to now close the public clearing, bring it back to the commission uh, for any comments. What I found interesting is you mentioned the fireplace and the, and the house being U-shaped. The fireplace is in the corner in the backyard, and so it's actually a three-way fireplace. There's the backyard, there's the living room, and there's the family room. All have openings to the one chimney, so it's quite, quite interesting Very feature. interesting, very interesting design. Have a couple okay. comments. Okay. Um, Mr. Schaefer? The uh, one unique thing about the house, a lot of these ranch style homes maybe had siding or brick or something on the front, but would be stucco the rest of the way around. This house is wood siding all the way around. So it's, mm -hmm. it's got a lot of integrity architecturally, I think, and it is a great example of an early ranch house versus the more mass produced later on ones. And the, uh, the three fireplaces in one common chimney is really uh, a great feature that courtyard just like is where you want to hang out it's it's so inviting but the backyard is massive and I might be mixing this up with another house but wasn't the original owner or maybe it was uh, Hunt who was number two was part of a camellia society or something was very involved and a lot of people up and down that block have huge camellias yeah yeah. So um, I, that's another little thing that I, I that was maybe folklore, neighborhood folklore. I don't know, but that's what I was told by the Hunts when when uh, they purchased the home, and uh, it's it's a really lovely home inside. It, it, the den has yeah. got redwood paneling. The living room has beam ceilings. I mean, it's just great architecture uh, at this home. So it's it's fun to to see them enjoy it so much. And I've been hounding them for ten years to do this, so I'm glad they finally did. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. And um, with that, any more? Okay, do I have a motion? I'd like to make the motion because okay. uh, they're my clients and friends, and <laughs> um, it's my privilege to do this. So I'd like to move that the, uh, we move approval of the Historic Resource Commission application 2017-14 uh, for the re and the categorization 2000. Uh, 17 13 and the preservation agreement or Mills Act of 2017 10 with uh, Zetulio Jimenez and Adriana de la Rosa uh, for the property at 2529 North Valencia. Okay, is there a second? I would love to second. It would be my honor and pleasure because after talking to the family and going through the home and seeing the home and what it looks like both inside and outside and knowing how well they're going to keep it up. I would be my honor to second the motion. Thank you. Okay, moved by uh, Commissioner uh, Schaefer, second by Commissioner Murashi. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carried unanimously. Thank you so much. Okay, now moving on. Now, let's not have a stampede for this, okay? <laughs> okay. Now I come to the time for uh, item number five, election of officers for the Historic Resource Commission for 2017-2018 term. Uh, we will first take up the selection of chairperson for the 2017-18 18 term. 
I would like to nominate uh, Chairperson Alberta Christie to continue being chairperson. I would second that. Anyone else? <laughs> no? Okay. I did it for five years. <laughs> You're not there yet. I'm not there yet. Okay. Okay. Uh, moved by uh, Commissioner Marashi and second by Commissioner Schaefer that uh, the current chair, Albert and Christie, continue to be the chair for the next year. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? You can vote. Go. No. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, uh, motion carried. Thank you so much, everyone, uh, for, for giving me another year. I mm -hmm. really appreciate that. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, next one is now for vice chair. Okay, uh, on that, okay. Nomination. I, I would love to uh, nominate Phil Schaefer. Is there a second? <laughs> I second that. Okay, oh. I second that. <laughs> okay. Anybody? Any other nominations for vice chair? If not, uh, uh, it's moved by Commissioner Marushi, uh, second by uh, Chair Alberta Christie, that we nominate uh, Commissioner Phil Schaefer to continue as Vice Chair of the Commission. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? Abstain. <laughs> <laughs> Motion carries. Congratulations, another year. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all. Okay, moving on. Now we have our work study session, YMCA project. We've been eagerly waiting for this project to come before us. Okay, Hadina, would you? And you're going to have to wait longer. Okay. They're not ready yet to um, make a presentation for you tonight. And I, I apologize. We found out about it just days after the agenda was posted. But um, the project is, I will, give you, I will give you a general update on it. It's okay. been, um, um, we have entered into agreements with um, St. Joseph Health. They, um, the city is responsible for stabilizing the building, which means getting it into um, a state that it can be transferred, um, to that the ownership can be transferred. The, um, we believe that we have reached that stage right now and um, have submitted to their architects and review periods uh, review people a punch list of you know things so um, we're going back to see if everything's been done that that should be done so we're in that that stage right now the uh, st. Joseph's Health is interested in putting a many of you I think several of you were at their their presentation um, on Broadway a couple months ago maybe yeah. um, and the facility, they're thinking of using it as a beautiful facility uh, for both classes, exercising, education, counseling, um, and just extending services out into the community. So it's really a positive use. We're looking forward to hearing more of it. The we are. Um, Right now, the schedule is anticipated to be looking at the end of the year, early next year, to be transferring, actually transferring ownership of the property um, to St. Joseph Health. When the actual designs, when they have, right now they have conceptual designs, which are not building permit kind of designs, but when they have um, more solid designs, they will come to you um, as a certificate of appropriateness process, which you haven't done, at least since I've been here, we haven't seen a certificate of appropriateness um, application before. So you, your responsibility for reviewing that will be to <clears throat> ensure that it, um, the project alterations that they are proposing will be consistent with 
the um, city's historic guidelines as well as the Secretary of Interior guidelines. So um, that's a little bit about the project. Um, hopefully um, at one of your upcoming meetings um, we'll have an update on that from the applicants themselves so you'll just get a, a view of the of the project and a little bit of information about it. So um, that's all we, we have for that one. <laughs> Okay. Uh, uh, Commissioner Moreshi. I just wanted to make a couple of comments from going to that forum. It was a well done forum. Um, yes, they plan on having a wellness center along with a fitness center, uh, daycare for the fitness center up to three hours. Um, it was quite interesting. Uh, one of the facts I learned about the place was that it was the place the very first Toastmasters meeting ever was held in the world. Really? was held at that YMCA building, very first meeting. Uh, and that the sisters came to that place and established that place early on too. Uh, so that was fascinating. Um, what they plan on doing, this is again what their concept is so far, is that uh, they're not able to save the gym, so they're gonna have to tear down the gym because it was structurally unsound. But they are putting a lot of uh, interest in, in historical preservation. They talked about the grand sitting rooms and how they're going to maintain those and refurbish those. And they have each one has a beautiful fireplace that they're going to restore, things like that. They talked about the uh, swimming pool in the basement. Unfortunately, it's not ADA compliant and there's, it can never be made. So they're trying to figure out what to do about that. But they plan on building a, uh, a swimming pool out back. Uh, the parking is going to be to the north of the place, so you have to walk around. Um, they want to have rooms that they can rent out for community events and neighborhoods. Uh, they expect the gym fee to be roughly $40 per month for an individual basis, but they are going to have um, stipends or whatever to reduce it for low income to about $10. Uh, they're hoping the hours are going to be from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, the reduced time, though, for the fitness center, and that's seven days a week. They're trying to figure out how they can help the homeless or incorporate the homeless. Uh, at that meeting, there were a lot of youth. I was really glad to see that. And the youth were there talking about a, a, a student intern program possible with them and things like that. So it was a great meeting, and I can't wait to see what they do with the place. Thank you. Any other comments? You know that that YMCA building has been a topic of discussion long time with the city. When I was on the city council, we had an um, Armenian group uh, came in from Glendale and they wanted to refurbish it to make it a retail gym. Uh, we keep the pool, but put um, um, uh, Armenian restaurant in there to add to, to that. So uh, that it was too much money, so it gone on. So. I mean, we've had so many different ideas of what to do with that building, that historic building, and uh, it's, I'm glad to see that we're finally settling on something, because uh, if you've ever been there, like we were when we were on the city council, to go inside and see uh, the deplorable shape that is, and how our police department used that for urban warfare and um, with the, the, what do you call those guns? The paint guns. Uh, paint guns. The paint guns, you know, it was their training center and I'm going, this will never be as glorious as it again because I didn't mm. see how with all of that paint, you know, uh, but once again, they were using that as an urban training for terrorists and who know back then what we you know encountered today so but I'm so glad that we're finally at a point to bring this grand and noble building here in Santa Ana back to its original shape and original prominence and just discussing Toastmasters man Toastmasters should be on this you know as far as saying hey this was one of the first Toastmasters that we ever had. It's interesting how you come to this commission and you, the more you, you talk, the more you learn. And other people come in with little bits of, of information that we now can include 
in our historic register. So, I mean, Santa Ana have had a tremendous effect on Orange County, um, uh, the past, the present, and even in the future. So, you know, you can go back and say, hi. You can go back and say, I learned something more about the YMCA building and, and different things. So, um, uh, thank you for for the information. Any other comments? No? Oh, yeah. Well, I was going to comment that I, I'm glad that uh, not only some, uh, something fine can be done with it, but even that anything can be done with it, because mm -hmm. I have never been in there, but I understand it's uh, been it's in bad shape. It's been vacant for 20 or 30, 30 years or something. And on the on the Toastmasters, uh, uh, the international headquarters used to be on uh, North Grand, opposite mm -hmm. the uh, uh, post office. Uh, Ralph Smedley uh, mm -hmm. uh, established their headquarters here. In fact, the uh, there was a junior high school named for Ralph Smedley in, in town at one time. And then it turned to Carr. It's now Carr. We my kids. One went to Carr <clears throat> um, Smedley, and one went to Carr Junior High. So it was on that. Yeah. Oh. Uh, any other comments? Robert. Yes. Uh, echoing uh, Ed's comments or, or yours, I, I, I do think it's important that if staff could relate to uh, St. Joseph's organization that um, there should be some sort of a, a plaque installed in there on the building that would recognize you know the history of YMCA the fact that the building was designed by the first registered architect in Santa Ana Frederick Ely and it was where Toastmasters International uh, began uh, those are signif significant items and you know people going into that building ought to know that um, it's not something they should discover <coughs> accidentally it should be prominently displayed well that can be a condition of approval on your certificate of appropriateness right. I think that's a a very um, appropriate one yeah. to include. Absolutely. Good idea. Good idea. Anyone else? Okay. All right. Then uh, moving right along, we have staff member comments. Okay. Um, we have a, a lot of comments, and not all of them are bulleted. Um, I know Commissioner Rush had a number of um, issues that he did want to have on the agenda, had requested, and so I'll try to address those or indicate how we are addressing them. Um, the, as you, as most of you know, probably, um, Holly Sobolescu, who has worked for the city for almost 20 years, um, retired. Um, she had been she had been out on medical leave and she retired and um, we wish her well but we're also trying to look at our program and see how the historic resources um, program not just the commission but the program in general is going to um, move forward. Um, so we're looking at reorganizing it, um, different ways of including staff. But as you may or may not know, we, as well, I guess as the gentleman that spoke here today indicated, um, we do have a backlog um, on on the items for um, applications for registration, and we are expect. And as a result of the change in the fees. Um, the elimination of the fee waiver and uh, fee reduction, um, we're anticipating a large number of applications to come in before August 4th. Um, I'll, I'll talk about that a little later in, in my discussion, but um, as, a result of, as a result of that, um, we're anticipating that we're going to be having a number of meetings in addition, we have sort of this, a little bit of a backlog, and um, Vernie, who is responsible for the, um, for the comprehensive and historic um, planning um, division of the planning di di of the pl pl section of the planning division, um, is going to tell you how we're addressing concerns uh -huh. like the gentleman's here. The, 
But the bottom line I want to say before I give it over to Vernie, which I should, um, is that as a result, the only time if they file for the application, the tax assessor only files it at the end of the year. Right. So the critical part for us and for you, and for you because you're the commission members and having to review these things, is that we get these things done in time for them to be recorded by the 31st of December. And so um, we're going to talk about it later about additional meetings and, and that kind of thing. But I'd like for Vernie to explain to you how we're um, looking at solving some of our some of our issues, challenges. Thank you, Canada, and thank you, um, commissioners, uh, this evening. Um, as you all know and are aware, the Historic Resources Program has been a continued success here, uh, much in part to the commission, um, yourselves, and members of our community and neighborhoods that have kind of promoted these sorts of programs in our city. Um, as you may know, in the past, we had a single staff member uh, assigned and allocated to Historic Resources. Um, and preservation, which was Holly Sobolewski. Um, during her time with us here in the past few years, much in thanks to the fee reduction, there has been, um, we have experienced an uptake in application activity. And so during that time, um, Ivan Orozco has graciously, graciously um, assisted our comprehensive planning staff with um, processing of these applications. So you see a familiar face in the room here. Uh, which couldn't have been more timely as um, Ivan's assisted us in getting these five ap uh, four applications plus the, the Mills Act before um, you this evening. So thanks to Ivan that we're um, moving forward. But I just want to let you know as, as the representative of comprehensive planning that we're committed to historic preservation and that we want to see these applications that we have received move forward in a timely fashion. So one approach that what we're hoping to do is to do some cross-training with other members of staff. So currently I supervise four other staff in the comprehensive planning section. Phil Becerra is aware that I'm also in charge of the city's general plan update, which we're doing in-house. So it's a very busy time right now at the city. We were in this very uh, room last night till uh, almost eight o'clock. So um, as Candida mentioned, we do have a backlog and uh, I just wanna say we have about 21 pending applications, not including the applications we saw um, this, this, this afternoon. And so we're going to kind of divide and conquer, train other staff. We have um, approached a historic resources consultant who you may uh, be familiar with. Um, her name is Leslie Human. Mm -hmm. She's going to be providing some staff training to our staff. She has uh, been involved from the get-go um, with our historic resources um, processes. And so she's very aware and capable of, of providing staff direction, as is Ivan with his experience working with Holly. So we're excited to move these, these applications forward and, and we also hope to continue to grow the program. Um, I'm also in charge of, of looking at things that come through French Park and Henninger Park. And so we're trying to understand um, what administrative level of purview we have um, currently and so what we can do with the Historic Resources to commit Commission to ensure that those applications are also processed um, in a timely manner. So there may be some changes that hopefully um, will um, benefit not only the residents, but also the commission and your ability to give us some additional direction. So um, with that, uh, one last thing I wanna say is thank you for agreeing to additional meetings. We needed to come up with a game plan to approach these pending applications of, the, of which there's over 20. And so I'm gonna go ahead and read out the additional dates. The first um, is gonna be September 28th, and I'm sure you've received an email or will receive an email on these special meetings. I believe Rosa has been in coordination um, with each of you. September 28th, and then we have our standing meeting on October 5th, which is a Thursday, and then we have um, just, in case, just in case an additional meeting on the 19th of October. So three upcoming meetings, hopefully to um, take care of this backlog and make good on our promise to uh, move uh, historic preservation forward in the city. Thank you. Okay, the city attorney had ju has just reminded me that this is a special meeting, so I have to consolidate things under the bullets on the agenda. So some of them are going to be a stretch, and Commissioner Rush, you may have to ask me some questions about things that you have concerns about. Um, that said, I will continue with the code enforcement for historical properties. 
Um, we've had a lot of concerns about how we're going to be approaching code enforcement and um, one of the how we're going to approach it and a number of code enforcement issues. Um, one of the first one of the things that we have had is we've had a problem with um, work in progress. So um, um, Commissioner Hardy has been um, really helpful in reporting things that she saw in, in progress. There are other people that were also reporting things in progress. Um, and sometimes it would get lost in the, the shuffle of the code enforcement. So we've developed a, a special system. It's on the website now. It's kind of um, it's kind of like in red. If you see work in progress, we have a special email address that you send it to, which um, means that you'll have shift um, coverage. So it'll be addressed within the shift coverage. Um, there's also a special phone number there as well. And we're asking people to um, state that the work is in progress when, um, when that occurs. So that's the first code enforcement issue. Um, the other code enforcement issue that you had is some of you may have seen a um, historic preservation issue that came went before the Planning Commission recently. Mm -hmm. it, was in, it was in the French Park um, Special District, the overlay zone for that. Um, some of you were asking, when is it coming to us? Why is it coming to us? Um, it's not coming to you. And the reason that it's not coming to you is because that was what Fran historic French Park was one of our first, um, was one of our very first historic areas that was designated. And at that time, we did not have a Chapter 30 in our zoning code. And um, so as a result, the staff planners got creative, and what they did was they created a special, what we call a special district that is historic. And so it says in this district, you have to um, meet the historic French Park guidelines. You have to um, you have to comply with those. You have to comply with the um, Secretary of Interior standards. Um, you have to, and if you're going to modify a project, you have to have it reviewed by the Planning Commission because there was no historic resources commission. There was no place else to go. Um, that said, now we haven't had anything happen in a similar district. Um, staff is going to, we have another district that's very similarly treated that it was a historic district where it, do, it would also not come to you. It will be um, because it was done before your creation. And that's one of the things that is on our, our agenda uh, for this year is to look at our zoning code and um, change those codes so that then the responsibility transfers from the Planning Commission to um, at least for compliance with the historic components of it. If it's a zoning issue, it will still go to planning commission, but for the historic components of it, they will go to you. That is the, that will be staff's proposal to the planning commission. Um, so that was another code enforcement um, issue. Uh, we also had a question uh, that was code in enforcement in that we had a burnt, a structure that was burnt down on Washington, uh, 1002 Washington. It was, um, a, it had to be identified as a, as a um, dangerous building because it was, um, it was burned down. Um, and we are concerned, and so it has been demolished, and that um, that did not come to you as a um, 
um, as a board because it was a dangerous building and it was identified so by our chief building official. Um, new construction on that site. We are um, working with our new um, consultant on how that will be um, processed uh, in terms of new construction on the site. So we will um, provide. We have not had any applications for doing anything on the site at this point. So um, that um, concludes and sort of in terms of segueing in addition to the districts for that we're looking at making changes for existing districts we're also looking at um, you know just for code enforcement purposes and ensuring protection of historic resources we're also looking um, at how to advance a historic um, district program and have a stronger program so that um, in um, just as a whole, will um, be able to designate, uh, protect neighborhoods as a whole, as opposed to just individual structures. Um, Candida, before you jump ahead, I just wanted, as far as this whole issue at the code enforcement, so at the planning commission meeting, one of the concerns was because the applicant had, it was a back and forth about, oh, did he pull a permit? Did he apply for a permit? not going to go into the whole discussion, but at that meeting I'd asked if staff would take it to a level where any permits, building permits that were uh, applied for in Henniger Park and French Park, would they go to staff, planning staff for a sign-off? And, and will that Yes, happen? they do. They do now. Um, this so, person didn't apply for permits. That so so this is, then is a new policy that will... Or is I guess is that's been in, that's been in effect, and um, actually everything in French Park gets re reviewed by their neighborhood um, association as well as Henninger. No, no, I understand that the SD19 zoning requires that. But what I'm saying is that there seemed to be from our meeting there was a back and forth about you know an interior permit, exterior permit, and as I mentioned at that meeting, other cities have it where any permit pulled on a property within that zone. They, they get routed to planning. So that's what I'm asking is, will that interior and exterior, will that be routed to planning division staff for a sign-off? They go, th yes. They will be, because they, they aren't do. now. If someone gets an interior remodel or something, they don't go to planning now. That was part of the applicant's, um, I guess, what he had expressed at the hearing. So, is, so you're saying then all permits within French Park are going through planning? Yes, yes. Even the routine re-roof everything. A, a re-roof re is not routine, and I mean they always. I'm just routine. saying, any yes. permits? Okay. Yes, that's they all. Thank permits. you, Can Candida. W wouldn't permits pulled for interior work that wouldn't apply in the SD zone because it's not controlled by the architectural committee for French Park? They only well, control the exterior. Correct, Commissioner Rush. But the concern was that the applicant again trying to kind of bounce around to what was interior exterior one of his claims was that he applied for a roofing permit and was sure he applied for a roofing permit doesn't that cover all trades i think that was his logic you know <laughs> probably but and so i think from from my reaction was just simply let's just not let things slip through the cracks let's have it go through a, a, most of the time i assume it'll be a, a very quick planning division sign off and move it on so you know i completely agree in the sd19 zoning is specific that it's exterior um, modifications, not interior, but you just never know with any of these applications as they go through. So, um, yeah. oh, yes. Um, would that hold true for the SD42, the interior uh, changes would be looked at? Or? Well, typically we Typically, we sign off on most things that come through. It, if it has the historic district, they, the building people, they usually send it over to us, and we just, it's not, it's not something we would send to your group to review, right. actually. We would just say, okay, this is a rewire. Okay. See you later. Because we have a gutted house right now, so. Well, yeah. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Ivan's aware of that. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. A hundred-year-old gutted house. Okay. Thank you. Uh, 
Um, the next issue I wanted to talk about was the um, award program for outstanding historic projects. Um, this was suggested by um, Commissioner Rush. It was something that was in effect a number of years ago, and I, to be honest, I didn't really know about it, and I hadn't heard um, about it. But in um, it is part of your responsibilities. You it is in your um, in in the creation of your commission. You you have that ability um, to give awards to um, people that support or homes that support historic preservation efforts in the community. So that may be something you want to think about and move forward with um, appropriately. So, um, can I make a comment yeah. on that? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I've been on the commission the longest of anyone here, and we, uh, we used to do that uh, right. every yeah. year. And I think the reason it stopped was a budgetary thing with the city. Mm -hmm. And so they told us we're not going to do that, we're discontinuing it. But um, I think it's a great, it doesn't cost very much, I don't think, to do. Uh, the commissioners were mostly the ones that would bring nominations forward to Holly. And, um, and then we had a little committee of, I think, three people that would you know, look at those. But it's a great way of recognizing people who are really doing outstanding work in terms of restoration. Um, so there are some properties, I think, that are worthy of that out there. I'd be in favor of it. Well, I, 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 I agree with Phil. And goodness, um, ginning up a certificate in this day and age of computers is is a, couldn't possibly be any cheaper. I mean, a little ribbon and a gold foil seal and uh, a few signatures on a document and saying thank you in a public forum to somebody who spent tens of thousands of dollars or hundreds of thousands improving a physical asset for this community. Uh, we ought to be cranking out those certificates by the, you know, 100 group. Um, I can't imagine anything that's more effective for us than recognizing people and incentivizing them uh, to do that. I'm, I'm, when I chaired the Rental Housing Task Force and we came up with a gold seal program, which was um, between us girls, uh, it was a glorified certificate. It had a gold seal on it. That's what we called the program. And I was astounded year after year the number of property owners that would jump through hoops even when they didn't get an economic incentive. Most of them didn't get it because we had a very limited pool of folks who would get awarded that. But it was incredible how hard they worked to get that incentive. They wanted it so they could advertise uh, that their property had been awarded the gold seal by the city. So uh, you talk about a way to compound and leverage um, people's resources, this is an easy way to do it. And that was very foolish for the city to abandon that program. I hope we bring it back immediately. And I remember when there was that program, the, um, the award for outstanding historical preservation or work in that direction. Um, and I wondered what happened to it. Because people do notice that, so thank you. Um, I have a question for you in regard to the program. Was it administ Did you administer those certificates, or was it done by council? That's the question by the, I'm asking. By the council? Was it done it by you? I mean, so did you have one meeting at the end of the year where, we, um, where the I, Historic uh, Resources Commission awarded these? Yes. Or, so yeah. it was done. It was done During at a your normal level. Normal meeting. In a yes, normal, regular our, meeting, yes. like at your last meeting or your first meeting of the year. Um, and that might be, particularly your first meeting tends to be, is in January, and so it's a little lighter yeah. because we don't have the rush for the, um, so that might be um, an interesting time to, or a time to think about having it um, um, scheduled then. Thank you. Thank you. And that would be something that we could do on staff level without having to um, get certain approvals. And that we want to make it easy for you. For you. Yeah. Believe me, we don't want you to go through stairs. Yeah, we could, <laughs> if we could keep it at this level, it would be a good thing. 
Yes, thank you. Um, the final thing that I have to talk about is the re historic resources application fees. Um, at this point, um, on August 4th, um, the waivers for fees, um, currently we have a waiver for the, um, the registration and categorization, um, total waiver for that fee, and then uh, we charge 50% of the cost of um, processing the Mills Act applications. And on August 4th, those waivers will go, go away, and um, applicants will be able, required to pay the full amount. And um, I just need to be aware of that, and in, con in conjunction with that, um, the city is doing a fee study of its application fees. Um, it will be looking at costs for um, costs staff time costs for associated with processing specific fees and they the fees may change there may be a um, and one of the things that we as staff are going to be looking at is ways that um, that we can process things in ways that will um, um, be more efficient and effective and promote the, the goals of historic preservation. Um, and that may mean a change in responsibilities for collecting information or other kinds of um, approaches to the way that we do business. Um, but in that, because of that um, council action, that the action that council um, took, we were going to have to look at some creative ways of continuing to have a really um, aggressive um, program because that's what we want to have. So, um, so the 21 <clears throat> that are going to be coming before us, they're locked in. They're okay. They paid their fees. They, they, they've already been there, so there's no increase or anything to them. Right? No, and any, anyone that applies before August 4th, and it's on our website, there's a big, um, it's in red, it's in big italics. You know, fees go up on August 4th. We're telling anyone that talks to us at the counter, um, staff is saying, get this in by August 4th. Um, there's a couple of um, one of our planning commissioners is is very is a very strong advocate. He was on your commission. He was on this commission uh, as well. is a very strong advocate for historic preservation. He has been putting out the words uh, the word to his um, constituent, his neighbors, his friends, the people that he um, associates with, and um, he anticipates that there's. We anticipate that there's going to be more than 21 coming in um, before the end of that, and I um, maybe half a dozen, maybe a dozen more. So, um, so that fee waiver will um, will or the end of the fee waiver will have an impact on our workload and your work workload as well. So, um, but that said. Um, if I didn't get any of your, um, you're going to have to ask me about one of your agenda items that is not included <coughs> in the bullets. Well, can I ask about this particular? Yes, item? you can. Um, may I ask? And because I don't know, it's not. I'm not asking this. It's not a loaded question. I'm just asking. Did the count? Did the city council refuse to extend the waiver, or did they simply? take no action and let it expire uh, they refused to they said they refused to extend it they um, did not take action on one night on one night and then it was not agendized intentionally after that I have a comment regarding the fees um, because again I've been on the commission a long time and uh, when the city used to pay everything and it was completely free 
to people. And um, that was when we were starting the program out. And a lot of people weren't sure. I don't know that I want the city to have control over my property. It took a few years to kind of gain some trust in the community, I think. Um, but then when the budget crisis hit, they uh, eliminated the free and it went up to over $10,000. And um, virtually three rich people in Floral Park did it and no one else because it just was overwhelming to a normal family to think of putting that much money to get their home on the registry. So with that backdrop, that's why the fees were reduced because we went through, I think, a two or three year period of almost, you know, maybe four or five houses a year going on. And when we reduced the fees, of course, then we got a whole flood of people coming in that had sort of been waiting to see if that might happen. Um, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if you have 21 additional houses between now and the, the fourth, because I've personally spoken to a lot of people that have emailed me, called me, messaged me on Facebook. Is this true? Is this happening? So um, I, I don't know um, what influence we have as a commission, if we can go to our respective city council members and say, hey, you know, we'd like to lobby you to, you know, look at these fees more carefully, at least at this, you know, I'm sure they're looking at a lot of fees, not just ours. But um, I think that, you know, collectively, maybe we can do something because it did have a negative impact on properties going on. And I think we're all here because we want to preserve the properties. We don't want to see them modified and, and bastardized with, you know, uh, inappropriate additions and remodels and things like that. So um, I, I would speak in favor of doing something with the fees that's a little more friendly to an average person. I think it's going to be prohibitive. Well, Phil, I agree with your comments, but of course, staff here can't make those I changes. That. I'm We're just, preaching to the choir. I'm speaking to the fellow know, commissioners, the, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's unfortunate. Um, as most of you know, Santa, Santa Ana has the, in aggregate, has the lowest assessed property valuation per parcel of any city in the county. Uh, if it's not the lowest, I believe it is the lowest. It, we, we're, we're nearly rock bottom. I'm almost certain we're at the bottom. And yet here's something which will enhance property values. But it's a long-term play. It's not a short-term play. And what is also shocking is that when we go back to these horrendous fees, we will be the highest in the county. There won't be another city in the county where it will cost more to put your home on the historic register and take advantage of the Mills Act than in Santa Ana. That's quite a distinction. For a city with the most historic resources, we make it the most expensive and the most difficult to do it. I mean, it's absolutely, it's an insult to this commission. It's an insult to anybody that owns a historic resource in this town. It's an absolute slap in the face. So uh, it's, it's tragic. Well, I, I appreciate having the conversation that I did with you two about, you, like you said, making, seeing if there's other ways of maybe putting some of the burden on the homeowner to do some of the research and other things to make the fees fair. I appreciate you being open to that. I also want to offer, being on the uh, Floral Park Historic Committee, I, I also want to offer you the opportunity to come to one of our meetings and talk to the committee because as you know the committee has worked with individual homeowners and filling out the forms like that and using the colleges and stuff like that and maybe we could put our heads together on how to do some of that shuffling of resources. So certainly make you aware of the meetings. Our meeting, one meeting is tonight, but I'll make you aware of the future meetings. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, no, of course. We can't make that meeting. No, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but we, but I'm gonna speak for Vernie. We would really appreciate the opportunity. Yeah. And I have to agree with you as far as talking to the council um, member that uh, appointed us to the commission. I know I spoke to mine. Uh, he had no choice. I cornered him at, a, at an event that we went and um, introduced him to someone important to better his daughter's education. So I used that opportunity, okay? And, um, and what he said is that, well, you know, the staff is reviewing the fees and I will 
look at it uh, and so forth. But um, I will still continue to, to, to be talking to him and knowing how important this is to us and uh, also generating revenue, which they need, you know, for our city. And um, uh, to put up so high of a fee that you hope progress is not good, not the best and highest practice for a city to do. So uh, with that, okay, any other comments? Kathita? That's it on the staff, uh, Bernie? I've covered my bullets. How about you, Bernie? Okay. Thank you for your commentary. Uh, we'll certainly look into the opportunity, um, Commissioner Marashi, to um, work with the neighborhoods. And as I mentioned, this consultant has tremendous experience in historic preservation. We'll be turning to her for some guidance to try to simplify and hopefully save us some, some time and energy to make to transfer that savings onto the homeowner. Thank you. Okay. All right. Next, Commissioner uh, member comments. And we'll start over here, Commissioner Hardy. Yes, um, this blue fire that um, I gave everyone, it's to invite you to head into your park summer street fair this Saturday um, from 11 to 3. Uh, we'll have the, um, the city's stage showmobile and we're going to have some music and uh, a lot of informative booths and activities for children so come on out if you can thank you oh also i gave everybody uh this brochure the building uh community building awards 2007 santa ana um in case you hadn't seen it yet the um some outstanding uh groups doing some good work in our city so it's <laughs> worth looking at thank you Commissioner Bucera. No comment. No comment. Okay. No comment this evening. Mm -hmm. No yeah. comment. Commissioner Hittendale. Well, I would like the uh, homeowners uh, to use the ladies for the fact that uh, I'm here. He's homeowners. still here. Mm -hmm. I do want to thank uh, uh, the staff for the work that is so difficult. Commissioner Rush. Thank you. Um, I just want to comment. I, I, certainly, I want to thank the homeowners as well. Sadly, only one's here, but congratulations to you, sir, on your uh, uh, nomination there, and, and uh, hope you uh, gives you greater appreciation for your home. So, um, and uh, Ivan, I know you worked hard uh, laboring without. Uh, um, you know your your mentor or at least um, in her shadow um, but uh, Holly leaves big shoes to fill um, and that of course makes me wonder what what is the city going to do with regard to replacing uh, Hallie is is that position going to be canceled or is that going to be unfilled or what what will be the status of her position um, it will be filled hmm. um, we have um, we have submitted the paperwork for and begun recruitment. Um, we are not sure how it's going to be structured, how historic preservation is going to be structured. Um, and right now we're trying to take as much advantage as we can of this consultant. And, um, and we're looking at um, having more people involved with the program. So a greater um, opportunities because it's good for it's good for the staff. Um, it provides them for staff enrichment, and I believe because it provides them with an opportunity to learn historic preservation. And then even if it's not their primary discipline, if they're a current planner or an advanced planner, they think about it. So it colors the way they look at their special 
um, part of work. We will have a core staff, but we, we will probably have more people working on it. We haven't figured out the details yet, but, the, but a position will be replaced. Well, good. I'm glad to hear that. You know, it's interesting. I happened to have a conversation last evening with Robert Escalante, who I'm sure everybody here knows, who owns Custom Auto Service at Third and French. And um, uh, Robert said that he had a call from some fellow who'd been contracted by the city, some public relations professional, to do some sort of a um, video or something um, to promote the city. And um, uh, he said, uh, he asked me, he said, have you had a call from this fellow? I said, no, I haven't. Um, but he, this fellow mentioned in his comments that he wanted Robert to talk about how that he was raised in Santa Ana and had his business there and his unique business and the history and so forth. And of course, I know I'm preaching to the crowd here, but um, <laughs> it, it just makes my blood boil that the city wants to exploit history and preservation and our beautiful built environment for public relations purposes, but by God, we don't want to spend any money to do it. Well, that's th those two goals don't fit. So anyway, a little frustrating. Um, uh, Candida, thanks for your report. I, I, um, as you know, I, I did, I did reach out. I think I sent an email to you or CC'd you on an email regarding 1002 West Washington, which is leads me to my comment about some months ago. Um, in fact, right when Hassan first got here, and I brought up this issue of what happened to the protection of historically sensitive neighborhoods. Park Santiago, Floral Park, West Floral Park, Washington Square, Wilshire Square, um, East Side, a number of neighborhoods that are historical, every single one of them that could qualify as just like French Park to be National Register Historic Districts, every one of them. But for a variety of reasons, they're not. But at one point, they were categorized as historically sensitive so that when someone came in to pull a permit, uh, you know, a red flag went up on the, 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 the computer screen to tell the planner, red alert, red alert, don't allow them to demolish the house, uh, don't allow them to just make mass changes without um, a careful look because it's a historically sensitive neighborhood. Well, when I inquired about this with Hallie, she said, well, when the budget crisis hit, that was, that was eliminated. No, I, I didn't know that, and none of the neighborhoods affected knew about it. We were all operating under the presumption that we still had some protection, and we don't. And uh, I was told by Hassan, he said, don't worry, we're going to train all of the staff so that this won't happen anymore. Really? That's how we wind up with a trailer in the 1100 block of Baker, North Baker and Washington Square. A trailer. Now you can call it what you want, it's a manufactured home, but it's a trailer. And a rose by any other name is still a rose. A trailer by any manufactured housing name is a trailer. And it's a disgrace to that neighborhood. And there are so many embarrassments in Washington Square, and there are other neighborhoods where there's been some of these abortions that have been allowed by planning. And I'm not saying people have done it maliciously, but it's by neglect. Uh, Bomo Corral. Sometime when you're driving around, go to Bomo Corral, just above Civic Center, at the end of, you access it off of Baker, and look at those houses and say, gee, do they, are they, do they fit in with Washington Square? No, not at all. There's uh, two houses that were built um, a couple doors south of uh, where Adeline Walker used to live in Washington Square on, on Olive Street. We're talking in the 900 block of Olive. And uh, it was actually her garden when she was alive. When she died, the lot was subdivided, and they allowed, sold them off to somebody who went in there and plopped these two houses that looked like they were picked up from Lake Forest and dropped into Washington Square. They have as much connection to that portion of, of Olive Street as uh, a moonscape, all right? And so the folks in Washington Square all have their hair on fire about 1002 West Washington 
because they're scared to death of what might be coming. And they have every right to be paranoid. And uh, so my comment here is that staff needs to again get back and adopt, go after protecting historically sensitive neighborhoods. And you know which ones they are, okay? Um, the other thing that I would like to propose, and that is that <coughs> when this commission started, we had two historic districts in town, French Park and Henninger Park. How many do we have today? We have two. So in all that time, there's never been one more district that's been created. Now, I'm not saying that that's anybody's fault in particular, and it's not been done maliciously, but we need to be proactive in a city that has so many historic resources to create more historic districts. And if that means that it's a process of education, then that's what we do. So many of these neighborhoods, I know Floral Park has explored it, and uh, Wilshire Square has touched on it a little bit. Of course, we all know the big bugaboo. Everybody is paranoid, oh my God. The city is gonna tell me what I can and can't do with my house. Well, God, I don't think anybody is, is um, you know, horribly complaining that that uh, they've that their property values have been degraded. When you go into districts, historic districts in Pasadena and uh, uh, and L.A. and we could, you know, my God, I learned the other day, Pomona has like twenty of them. Pomona. Excuse me, Pomona has the largest district on the National Register. Okay, I sit corrected, or I sit amended, whatever. The point is that why do we only have two? We have the most historic resources of any city in the entire county. So that's, uh, that to me is, is, not, is not good. We ought to make that a goal to increase that number. Um, the other question I have is uh, how do we put items on the agenda? That seems to be a process that is murky. I would love to respond to that because um, it's very confusing in your bylaws, and we had intended to bring forth to you an amendment to the bylaws, which not only addressed putting things on the agenda, but also the dates of your meetings, um, because right now there's the your bylaws are not consistent with your meeting times. So um, that will be returning to you at your next meeting, which will be a special meeting. Um, but your by a revision to your bylaws, which will clarify how to put things on the agenda. Right now, it it's very, very um, confusing, and it requires um, an act of God, um, basically. So we're going to clarify it and have that. And we shouldn't take an act of God. That's all I have. Okay. All right. Commissioner Murashi. I want to commend the staff. I mean, here you lost your executive director, you lost Hallie, you had the debt, you lost the waiver fees, so now you have this huge, huge influx of people wanting to get on at the last minute. And what did you guys do? You jumped on it. You didn't skip a beat. You did an outstanding job today, uh, uh, Ivan, outstanding presenting it, wonderful job. Candida. You and Vernie, as soon as I heard, one neighbor called me and said, oh my God, all of a sudden we have to do a 500 foot circle map. I gotta go hire a person for $450 to do that. I called you up, we had that resolved in minutes. And then you even had the form changed on the website within a day or two. So you guys have not skipped the beat despite all the things thrown at you, so I commend you. And we have such a tremendous potential ahead of us because I love how you didn't just shrink from this whole thing where you could have. I mean, you could have said, okay, we're just, you know, we'll replace the one person, but you're not choosing to do that. You're choosing to cross train and get more people involved. So I'm looking forward to seeing what you can do, and I'm looking forward to working with you and the staff in the future. So thank you. Uh, I also want to thank the library. The library did an outstanding job. I don't know if you knew about it, but a couple of months ago, they did a historic workshop. They had, it was, I want to say two hours. Manny led it. There were a lot of people there. Uh, we had 40 people, the largest number of people that have ever attended that workshop. The library was ecstatic, and it was a wonderful job. Nobody walked away not knowing what to do. They had their questions answered. They had their forms given to them, 
And Manny did a wonderful job by going through the Maharaji house as an example oh, yes. and doing it. I mean, so he walked you through a whole example step. It was extremely well done. I encourage that more. And that's why I think you're going to see a lot more people signing up here quickly. I also look forward to, you know, working uh, again with you on uh, getting the historical district. Uh, we're still working on it for French Park. It's not just a thought. We haven't given up. We are working on it full time. Well, French Park is it? Yeah. I'm sorry, not French Park. Floral, Floral, Floral Park. Floral, Floral Park. Park. Yeah. So, uh, and then finally, I just want to thank the homeowners for taking the time and coming up and doing this. Uh, it's exciting for us. We look forward to it. So, thank you very much. Commissioner Schaefer. I have a few comments. I'll try and make them quick. Um, I'd also like to thank the homeowners. Um, it was great to see them all here tonight, and uh, that's always awesome. I want to um, mention that we are, I speak for the whole commission, we're so saddened about Holly and uh, her departure. And uh, she was such a great resource that carried the ball and uh, did a wonderful, wonderful job. So I just want to publicly say that um, she was a great resource for me. I would send people her way. Uh, she was always quick to get back to people and very responsive. So she does, you have some very big shoes to fill. And um, I would like to echo what you said is that I appreciate the staff really scrambling to try and fill those shoes in sort of a void of leadership at the moment uh, at the top of the city. And um, anyway, I think you're all doing a great job. Um, I do have a practical question about that. So if one of us has a question, should we call Ivan or Vernie or you, Candida? Or in the past, I know Melanie had worked with the commission years ago. Who, who should we reach out to? Melanie is going to be the contact person for okay. right now. Um, you can call Vernie or I as well, but okay. Melanie is going to be the primary contact for, for at this point. practical questions about things. Right. Yeah. Or, um, we don't and want to she call may, all of you. That's, you know, we don't want to make more No. Work. And she may refer some things to Ivan, but yeah. that's... Um, at, poor Ivan. He got... His name got out with mine about the application process and the fees. So he's I'm been. I'm sure he's been very busy. <laughs> yeah, he's been taking a lot of calls on that. That so we want to give him a bit of a break. Oh. What's Melanie's phone number? It's uh, 714. Oh, I'm so glad. Thank you, Ivan. And uh, kind of as a segue there, um, I was on the commission when we worked with Leslie Herman before, and she was wonderful, a very knowledgeable, uh, arch uh, historic architecture trained person. And um, much of our program and what we do today was as a result of her leadership and working with the commission at this very infancy. And uh, I look forward to having her input again. I think she has a lot of uh, good to bring. Um, next thing is a, just a question about a building. Uh, it's a, the old Pacific Symphony building. I think it's at Santa Ana Boulevard and Bush. Could you give us an update what's happening with that building? It's all <coughs> boarded up. It's been boarded up for a few years now. It's, I, I don't want to see it go the way of the YMCA and sit there 20 years. I understood it sold about a year and a half ago. Got a tax sale. Yeah. It is privately owned. Um, the people that purchased it are architects. And they're very excited um, about the building, and they've come in and, and um, talked to us about um, several potential uses. Um, however, there's been a lot of damage yes. um, to the, as you would suspect, um, to not just the exterior but the interior as well. Um, they're trying to secure it, but they're not really sure. Um, what they're going to do next with it. So I, I don't really have an update for you, but I do. Okay. I have met with them. Um, they've had some big ideas about theater performances or even dinner theater or um, different um and I believe that is on the activities. registry, right? Yes, yeah. I believe so too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's the old Presbyterian Church. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Santa Ana used to have two Presbyterian churches. Okay, I, didn't, I only knew it as the, when it was Pacific Symphony. Um, I've only lived here since 1984. So, <laughs> newcomer compared to some of you. Okay, and then um, I, to kind of piggyback on Tim Rush's comment about new construction, 
uh, there's a new home was built on a vacant lot. I believe the address is 1801 North Flower. It is hideous. It does, it does not relate to floral park in any way, shape, or form. I cannot believe this got approved for that location. It looks like a 1995 Mission Viejo home with stucco and arched windows with the Palladian little, I mean, it's just, it's ugly. And um, it's, I'm glad somebody finally put a house on that lot because it was zoned R1, but what could have been there versus what's there is very, very sad. And it's, it's right behind uh, this guy's house, so he knows what I'm talking about. Um, let's see, my next item I've got, um, oh, we had a discussion, you'll remember, uh, a couple meetings ago about the wall and at uh, the corner of Heliotrope and 19th. Could you give us an update on that situation? <laughs> 19th. It's uh, Mike Ness, Ness property. Ness. Oh. Ness. Yeah. It's coming up in September, right? Is that coming before us, or no. how, what's, how, what's the progress of that? They had a hearing, okay. right? That... Um, we're trying to schedule a date for um, the next hearing on that, and that will be, we're not sure when it's going to be, just because of timing with summer vacations and people's families that um, the, both the applicant for the fence as well as the appellant um, had some family issues and vacations scheduled. So. We're looking at fall for that. Okay, and that, but that will not come before us? Is that what's been no, determined? No, it will not. It will go to the Planning Commission. Okay, that's so. mostly clarification. That's right. what I wanted to know what the oh, path okay. I thought was. You Where, how it's, yeah, I don't want to talk about it one way or the other. I just wondered right. no. if it's going to land in our laps, then we need to maybe be more educated about it. Right. Okay. No, it's, it will go to the Planning Commission because it's a, it's a zoning issue on the height of the wall. Okay, and my last comment um, is uh, I had turned in an application two years ago to put my home on the historic registry. It had been previously identified by Leslie Herman, and but it was two years shy of being old enough to be on at that time because it was 48 years old versus 50, and now it's almost 60 years old. But um, I had turned in an application, which I had one of the things is you have to get a preliminary title report. There's expense to that. It's about $500 to do that. Um, and the uh, then uh, city attorney person said, oh, well, you know, we have to look at that because you're on the commission. Well, half the commission was living in homes that were on the registry. So after about a year, they said, yeah, you can put your house on, but you can't do the Mills Act because you'd be benefiting from it. And I go, I don't need the Mills Act because I've owned my home for a lot of years, but I would like to get it on the registry mm -hmm. since I'm on the commission, I've got a degree in you architecture, I sell it. properties, it just, you know, it's a, it, it's like a the gold badge of honor, right? <laughs> so, um, and that, I talked to Melanie about it, and she goes, oh, that's not on our list of 21 homes. So I just reminded her that there might be a few homes out there that had turned in an application that somehow fell through the cracks somewhere, so I'll probably be resubmitting that. <laughs> Oh, so you yeah. have an application in? There was an application turned in, fully complete application, at least two years ago. So, But it was kind of in a holding pattern. I don't know if it ended up in a city attorney's file and never made it back to Holly or what happened. And I mentioned it to Holly about six months ago, but, you know, okay. I don't, um, I'm not complaining that she didn't follow We'll check your it. address. Yeah, we'll uh, 1141 address. West Riviera. I gave it to Melanie, so she's... Oh, you Hopefully. gave it to Melanie? Yeah. Okay. I, talked, I talked to her a couple weeks ago about this, she, about several properties that right. She's on were top questionable. Okay. Yeah, she'll yeah. follow up, I'm sure. She but will. I just wanted to say that publicly that uh, there may be other people, too. The 21 may not be the conclusive number. I don't know. Yeah. And that's all. I'm sorry. And then I was going to say we'll have to look at how your position on the commission impacts that. Yeah. Well, the, yeah, the person who was preceded you said that was, it was okay to do it, so. So you're not going to get the increased fees if it's okay because you've already been in the system, right? Well, that's, what, yeah, that's the only thing. I'm, I'm happy to be patient, but if the fees are going to go up, I don't want to pay $8,000 either. I'm not going to get the, I don't want to be four. Or whatever that, yeah, the first fee is. Yeah. yeah. Because I'm not, I, I told him I wouldn't do the Mills Act. Okay. 
Well, I want to thank the staff because I know you, you've had a rough couple of months yes. uh, going there. And, and, you know, one thing about the employees of the, uh, of the city of Santa Ana, and I said this long before I got on the council, during the time I'm on the council, uh, you're the stars of our city. You're the ones that are out there. You're the ones that are, are putting in and moving this city forward. So we're very proud uh, that you you know, are picking up the slack, that you're going forward, and that um, you take pride in what you do for our city. So uh, we want, I want to thank you for that. And, and as we said, please extend, you know, I wrote an email, you know, to Holly before she left and so forth that, you know, publicly we want to say that we really are missing her mm -hmm. and that she's enjoying her retirement, I think. <laughs> Once again, thank you to the homeowners, you know, and all. Thank you so much for being there. And I'd just like to say, Commissioner, if you get a chance, like Commissioner Marashi and I, we go out, we talk to the people if they're there, and we get to look at it, and you get to get to know a sense of, you know, the area, the other styles, and um, we also look at, I wonder if this house is on our historic grant. And we, I have one, 2520 oh, yeah. Valencia <clears throat> Drive. That is a magnificent house. And I, I, I don't know if that's is on that our historic. Is that the two-story Victorian? Yes. yes. Yes, I it looks like they both are. Okay. Yeah. Are they? Yeah. I I'm 99% yeah. sure they're both on. Oh yeah. my gosh. Uh, that, uh, the sisters. The yeah. The, the, absolutely. Yep. And, and I'm going, we're going, this should be on there <laughs> if it's not. But we, you know, want to check to make sure that they're on because of, of, of the condition of that home. Mm -hmm. I mean, to me, he takes this one and I said, this is a New Orleans French Quarter home, you know, that that you would see possibly there. But anyway, okay, so that's another thing for going out to see what more can we add to our register, okay? And with that, um, thank you all commissioners, and uh, I will do my best on leading you again, uh, you know, uh, as your chair. And uh, so the meeting now is adjourned at 6.33 p.m. And our next meeting will be a special meeting he held on September 28th at 4.30 here. The chambers. In the chambers. In the chambers, okay? Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Oh, be sure to leave.